Hello everyone. Good day. I am Jason Chavez from the Flexible Learning Office of ZPPSU, or we call it FLOS. I'm here to tell you something about the responsibilities, the roles, and the many things about Flexible Learning Office. The flexible learning is a ped pedagogical approach allowing flexible of time, flexibility of time, place, and audience including but not solely focused on the use of technology. So this is technically based on the definition of CHED in 2020, in the onset of the pandemic. Since February 2020, we have been conducting transition trainings for flexible learning to our teachers, as well as we've been conceptualizing guidelines for flexible learning. In the same manner, this is uh, leveling up towards policy on alternative delivery of teaching and learning for our students. On data gathering from students and situations, we see to it that we'll be creating frameworks of educational services. And this is basically based on the consistent conduct of research, survey, for feedback and other information like health details, difficulty in learning, and adaptability levels and others. This is how we basically make decisions uh, to cater to our students and our faculty. Online preparation and syllabus construction for flexible learning compliance. We've been doing training for creation of online course. So pl planning on online course, platform, using free existing content, writing and assessments uh, in the open online course, as well as MOOC training. So this is basically on the online uh, preparation and creation of courses online. So you see there are teachers who are using Google Classroom and other LMS. We see to it as well that we pro profile the students uh, in terms of their connectivity status, location, and online skills. So these basically are database build up or for our students' profile. And behavior on online engagement. So uh, there are many decisions that are made because uh, there are responses taken from the students. We wanted to get the authentic, real situation from the students. And of course, uh, we also do orientation on the platforms for online education through your teachers on what are the things that they can use, what are the things that you can compromise in terms of the teaching and learning and other instructional activities. Okay, in the school, ZPPSU uh, is, is taking its hand in terms of DELTA program, which is the Digital Environments for Learning, Teaching and Assessment. So this, this talks about on choosing flexi-teaching learning modes in terms of blended learning, competency badges for skills courses, and you know, some Google Classroom setup and other LMS types of uh, the delivery of, uh, of instruction no? using LMS. So in the electronic format, we also adhere to some students who may not be able to have very, very good connectivity. So we deliver instruction in terms of email, through messenger, and even text messaging, uh, and even radio to some extent for some announcement. Of course, we also do offline uh, transaction. Uh, we have our gates there who are open to, to many deadlines in order to submit your uh, modules and other materials for the teachers to grade and to get validation of your performances. So, of course, in many other instances also, if you need assistance, uh, the, the library, I'll be giving you the contacts later on or the page, uh, the page where you can contact them in terms of resources when you do your, when you do your assignments for, for your requirements. In terms of in, uh, student engagement, so we do have test types. Uh, we made sure that to some extent, we don't disenfranchise students when they do test. Uh, but of course, we cannot compromise also the, 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 this, that this test be secured from cheats, cheating or other forms of uh, integrity issues. And we do adhere to recorded performances such as audio, video, and the likes. And face-to-face -face performances, I think uh, for now, there is a pending uh, approval from the CHED on the limited face-to-face, -face, but maybe we can be updated sooner on what will be the next guidelines for this ones. For OJT, we have uh, arrangement with our coordinator with, uh, for OJTs, 
and uh, this can be maybe arranged on special cases based on the type of course that you have for your OJT. And of course, uh, for major exams, uh, we do adhere on skill sets based uh, training for conducting exam and we do research on how to conduct assessments and we do it in different modalities for us to be able to deliver and conduct and even implement different types of assessments. For the submission requirements, of course, uh, our teachers are, are, are supposed to accommodate different types of submission in terms of online, electronic, and manual. Uh, we do accommodate as well uh, deadlines that may miss because of uh, some issues on, uh, of the situation. So we adhere on an leniency type of deadline and submission. Of course, uh, this will be validated in terms of situations that you have uh, on every student. Uh, specifically as well that in spite of the leniency aspect, we do protect the integrity and quality of these submissions. Okay, for our evaluation, uh, we follow through uh, compliance. We know that some of you have difficulties. Uh, the, our instructors are instructed to, to have uh, follow through in terms of the submission of the requirements. That's one of our uh, flexibility because we have different types of flexibilities in terms of access. So assessments are expected to have uh, clear assessment tools. You are supposed to as well be informed of assessment details like deadlines and rubrics. So the teachers are expected to follow through this submission and of course to have compliance, uh, compliance with this submission as well. So for this academic engagement or assessments, uh, we always have continuous practice and evaluation to do better uh, implementations in terms of assessments because right now, Assessments may be very, very different from each of the courses and depending on, you know, the accessibility of the students. Okay, for some guidelines in terms of contacts uh, with our classes, we do adhere on synchronous and asynchronous type of meetings and engagements. So we expect that at least once to thrice a week, uh, the teachers are expected to have engagement with their students because, of course, no, for updates. And, of course, we adhere also on a self-paced online interaction and evaluation. And, of course, this is coupled with assistance. No? Uh, the teacher is expected to accommodate some questions and queries with regards to the course, uh, especially knowing that the students have different types of profile and accessibility. Okay. For our LMS or MOOC uh, or Massive Open Online Course, uh, we call MOOC as, uh, as a, one of those systems when we deliver courses, but generally it's about LMS or Learning Management System. Uh, we do adhere uh, on, on assessing uh, our output and performances in the standard way. So even if we have flexibility and uh, diverse type of of settings, we do still adhere to assessment as a standard. But of course, uh, the pace may be flexible. Like for example, some of you might be missing some dates for our assessment. And uh, there should be an engagement and interaction which meets halfway. No? Kasi minsan, uh, we do consider that there are subjects that are difficult if you will not be uh, doing it online or in real discussion orally. Uh, sometimes uh, offline uh, modules or learning modules might not be so uh, uh, ideal when you talk about teaching research or heavily laboratory heavy laboratory subjects no okay so just the same any type of uh, alternative teaching is based on the course dynamics no? the type of course and the student student profile but what's very very uh, Interesting in this situation is that we do compromise. No? Sometimes because of the course or the load of the course and its dynamics, uh, we need to do certain engagement that, which may be not applicable to all types of courses. So other modalities, this is already discussed, like module and manual uh, modules. 
okay, uh, we do have we, we do still conduct training for flexible uh, learning, and uh, specifically on the construction of the online setup or system, we do our we do have currently uh, constructing and conceptualizing our LMS, no, our exclusive LMS for ZPPSU. We are just trying to have some feedbacks in terms of what are the features that are needed by the students. And of course, in terms of training for our teachers, uh, we are continuously doing it. Uh, we have collaborations with University of the Philippines and uh, CHED in terms of capacitating our faculty and in terms of the delivery of flexible learning engagements. Okay. So for, our, for some assistance, you may contact our ZPPSU library. They will be able to give you some references or very, very good uh, resources in terms of when you conduct research or heavily loaded uh, subjects and majors of, of the different courses like engineering, uh, business, and others. Uh, you can also contact our ZPPSU. Office for Stu of Student Affairs, if you have questions or if you have clarifications with the conduct of flexible learning and other things related to student engagement. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening to the Flexible Learning, uh, flexible learning Office presentation uh, coming from the FLOS office.